So, uh, yeah, this is the last presentation before um, we have some of the customers coming in at the end of the day. So, uh, thank you everybody for joining me. My name's Kevin Booth, as you can <coughs> see. Uh, I work for Autodesk. I manage two businesses basically within the company. Um, and one of them is Shotgun, which we're going to talk through today. The other one is Stingray, which some of you may have just seen. Uh, my colleague Alex talk us through earlier. Um, so yeah, so basically I look after both of those. Uh, I, I cover all of Europe for these products. Um, so I see a lot of customers from film to games to TV to commercials. Um, and, and usually these customers are struggling with complexity. So these are people that are trying to do more work for lower budgets in shorter periods of time and they're struggling to communicate, they're getting too many emails, they're getting too many uh, post-it notes left on their desk, they're, they're really struggling to, to keep efficient. Uh, and really that's where, where Shotgun comes in. So today what we're going to take a look at is the product itself. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what it does, what it looks like. Um, we're then going to take a commercial uh, a project, a specific commercials project, and we're going to break down a little bit about how Shotgun would form the backbone of that production, how it would manage the entire process flow. Um, I'm then going to be joined by my glamorous colleague Morgan, who's going to wave and look embarrassed. So Morgan has joined us recently from uh, Passion Pictures. So Passion Pictures is a London-based commercials VFX company. Um, that's where Morgan spent a lot of time rolling out Shotgun into that facility. Um, Morgan will uh, name drop a few other big studios that he's worked at in the past as well, so he's a great guy to, to know. Um, and he's going to just give you a little bit of insight into how it was, it was used at some of the facilities there. So what is Shotgun? Um, if you're not familiar with it, it's a company we bought a couple of years ago now. Um, it's a technology that's been around for eight, nine years. There's been... Uh, Many, many companies, I think we're over a thousand customers worldwide now using it. But essentially it's a, a cloud-based production management tool. So uh, essentially if you're creating any sort of commercial creative work, images, animations, computer games, whatever it might be, if there's a visual element to it, then Shotgun is a very good product to help you just manage all of the myriad of tasks and processes and communications that go on around quite a, a complex project. Um, as you can see, we, we flag it for film, TV and game studios. We're also now seeing it being used at uh, architectural customers. Obviously, they're doing a lot of more complex visual work themselves. So just because it's come from a film heritage doesn't necessarily mean it's only for film use. It really is uh, a product that's designed for, to, to really be used by anybody, uh, regardless of size. So as a, a couple of examples, here's some customers just taken at random and a few uh, of bigger projects that have recently uh, gone through the, the shotgun production management pipeline. In the middle there, you'll see a few of our UK customers that I've just pulled out to, to show you. So we've got games, film, TV, all, all embedded in there. As I say, somebody like Frontier, Playground Games, or a couple of our bigger games cl clients that have moved to it. Passions listed, where Morgan's just joined us from. Uh, Brown Bag, um, Quantic Dream, Windmill Lane. So, so all sorts of big uh, games, film, TV customers are working with it. Um, as I say, essentially, it can scale up massively, but it can also be used by smaller teams too. So a lot of people ask, you know, why would, why would we need Shotgun? Why do we need this product that manages our, our, our work day, essentially? Uh, and this is to sort of a look at a, a post-production pipeline. Imagine you were working on a shot. These are the various steps, which we would call a pipeline step, okay, of how a project would flow through a facility. So you can see lots of departments, lots of individuals, lots of different processes, lots of iterations around projects, and that's just for one shot, okay? So imagine a shot of a film. You might have thousands of VFX shots now in a TV show or a film. Um, and you can imagine, obviously, as more people get involved, as more shots come in, let's say more facilities start to work together. Maybe you're bringing in freelancers or outsourcing work. It becomes an absolute spaghetti junction of communications and updates and files called final dot underscore final dot really underscore dot final two, you know, and things like that that you really need to be on top of to remain efficient. And, th and this is exactly the mess that Shotgun comes in to, to unpick for you. So, um, as I said, Shotgun is a, a, a production management tool. So essentially it's designed to be used by 
everybody on a production. So um, artists will use it, obviously. You know, it will help them manage their task list. It will help them publish work. It will help them, you know, showcase the latest version of an image that somebody needs to approve and rubber stamp before they move on to the next project. Uh, but similarly, you know, supervisors can use it to just quickly go through lots of different images, animations, models that they need to check off and uh, uh, approve as well. Managers use it, so managers of a studio, producers, people that are looking at the project and saying, yeah, we're on time, we're on schedule, we're on budget, they will use it. Your HR department would use it. Your runners going out to fetch coffee potentially could use it, um, and your pipeline engineer would use it, because essentially Shotgun, although it's a cloud-based product that everybody logs into, can also be embedded into your pipeline. So regardless of whether you're using Max or Maya, or a product from the Foundry, or a product from Max on it, any other 3D, 2D, you know, Excel, whatever it might be, any product that you're using in your facility can all be plugged in to Shotgun, so pretty much everything gets automated and managed for you by, by this system. So think of yourself in one of those categories, you're bound to use it. If you're not in that category, I can convince you that you will be uh, open to using Shotgun by the end of this presentation. So this is a quick whirlwind of what it looks like. So essentially you fire up your browser, you log in, username and password, and that's it, you click sign in and you're brought into the Shotgun system. You can have different projects, you get different parts of the interface dependent on your job role and the kind of uh, access that you've been provided. And you can start to work and manage all through the browser there, regardless of, of what you do. And it's all going to look different depending on your role and I'll talk you through that as we go through the presentation. So the product itself, Shotgun, big cloud-based thing got a couple of different components to it, and we're going to just sort of illustrate what those are. So there's the production management side to Shotgun. So this is essentially if you're managing the project, if you're the one responsible of making sure this is shot is going to come out on time, and you, know, you don't want to spend two weeks too long working on something, only to realise you've forgotten you know, a few changes to a model or whatever it might be, you're going to be the production management side, so you're going to be working with it in, the, in that mode. Then you've got a whole review and approval process. So one of the biggest bottlenecks of working in a production, regardless of what it is, is saying, look, this is my final version of work. Is it good enough? Can I move on? And it's how you review that, how you approve it, how you communicate, because obviously you're working with some fairly large files, and these files aren't that easy to manoeuvre around. Imagine you've got a big 4K video sequence, we're talking, you know, perhaps a terabyte of, of video footage that needs to be reviewed. Shotgun can simplify all of this and it can help you communicate all of this through the, uh, through the facility. Finally, you've got this pipeline and asset management side to it. So this is, you know, how can you automate some of these tasks? How can you plug them into your applications? You know, how do you make it easy for your artist, sat in Maya, to publish his work, to get his next task, to then move on to the next project that's all been set up so he's working with the latest version of the scene, he's bringing in the latest version of the texture. All those sort of day-to-day -day tasks can be managed by Shotgun because we can plug Shotgun into your application. And we do that with these apps. So you can see we've got loads and loads of different what we call engines. And each engine will enable it to plug into a product that you might have in your pipeline. If we don't supply an engine that suits you, so maybe you're using some weird and wonderful modeling tool that we obviously haven't uh, catered for, then you have the shotgun platform. So this is called Toolkit, and Toolkit is an API, and the API, the API enables you to basically configure shotgun to plug into whatever it is you happen to be working with. Okay, so very easy to, to integrate, um, but we have a load of off-the-shelf integrations all ready to go. Could be Photoshop, could be Maya, could be Max, could be Cinema 4D, dare I say it? You know, so anything that you might want to plug into, you can. So a quick look at those different pillars. Production management, you're looking at this kind of thing. You've got an overview of the project, the assets. You want to be able to schedule time, schedule tasks. You want to be able to pull reports to see how you are, you know, to make sure you're not duplicating work, to make sure you're not giving somebody a job if they're on holiday, things like that. So, you know, very simple 
um, live data, because it's all plugged into the production, but easy to work with, easy to manage all from within the system. The asset management side, the pipeline side, so for example, here the artist, he wants to work on his level, you know, in this case it's a racing game. He can launch Maya directly from Shotgun, and Shotgun's going to configure itself to feed him all the latest data. If he makes a change, for example, if he just takes that track and he adds in a new element, such as a barrier, for example, all of this is being done through the Shotgun system, and he can then publish his new version back, take some screenshots, you know, make some comments, publish it back up to the system, and then everybody associated gets an email to say, you know, there's been a change, review and approve, and he can then communicate and be told to move on to the next task. And in this case, you can fire up Photoshop and work on that texture change that he was told to, to update. And then you've got this whole review and approval workflow. Okay, so imagine you're the VFX supervisor, you're in charge, you've been given a load of assets to review. You can do all of that from within the shotgun system. You don't have to worry about where the footage lives. You don't have to worry about getting the latest version uploaded via FTP. You don't have to try and work with a big resolution file. And as you can see, shotgun handles that data in a very nimble way. So it can be streamed over the web. You can use your phone to access it. And again, you can use the grease pencil tool to mark up, make changes. And no point am I using an email system. And no point am I having to attach any video footage on my iPhone. It's all just being handled directly by Shotgun. So a very quick whistle stop to of what the main core features are. As I said, you can plug this into most of the mainstream products that you might have in your portfolio. And notice that they're not just all Autodesk products, right? Obviously, we support the Autodesk product range. It would be crazy of us not to do that. So Max, Maya, Motion Build, Mudbox, Flame, you name it, are all supported with a decent shotgun integration. So you can do all of this stuff directly from within the application. But we understand that a lot of people work with other tools as well. Um, so naturally, we, we support those. As I say, if it doesn't, we've got this whole API that's very easy to work with if, you, if you're that way inclined to, uh, to integrate it your, yourself you know, and do your own customizations and, and get it to do all sorts of weird and wonderful things. So. Um, let's have a look. Production management, this is what you are. You're a manager, you're a supervisor. And what we're going to do, we're going to flesh these out and show you how each of these different personas are going to use Shotgun. You know, so the production managers, they want to keep everything on budget. The review and approval team, the supervisors and the artists, they just want to speed up that whole process of looking at files, looking at renders, and saying, yes, they're good. Uh, the pipeline team, they just want to improve the workflow for everybody, make it as easy as possible for people to publish their work and get stuff through the pipeline. And then finally, you know, your, your platform team, basically everybody wants this to be installed into their app to be easily accessible from their, um, you know, uh, from their operating system without really making it too cumbersome for people to interact. So you'll see my ugly mug at the top. What we've decided to do as part of our demo is to take a actual commercial, as I said, and just break it down with the various people on our demo team playing different roles, OK? So uh, essentially, you'll see you know, myself as a producer how I would use Shotgun on that commercial, how our flame guy is going to use it, how our 3D people are going to use it, and how we're going to version it using Flare. So these are all Autodesk products, but you can imagine seeing Nuke in there, perhaps, or other 3D products as we go along. And they'll all function in a fairly similar way. So this is the ad in question. I'm just going to play this for you. I'm just going to unmute it. It's a water commercial, as you can see. Don't you go 
Right, so it's not a, an earth-shattering advert, but the reason I chose it is because you've got a couple of stock elements. You have a bit of live action. You have some green screen. So the lion was filmed safely in a nice green room, stood on a nice green table with a trained trainer looking after him. Uh, and then Compton, obviously. We've got some CG as well. So we've got a CG giraffe and some CG water. So we've got a short turnaround advert that goes through various different departments. We've got editing to produce what's called the conform, which is the original cut of all the different sequences. Then that gets fed up to the CG department to use as a locked off backplate so that they can start adding CG elements on top. Then it goes to our flare operator who's going to version it for the client. So the client wants to see different speeds, different cuts, different lengths. He wants to see different uh, 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 text on it for different locales, you know, various different processes. So it's, it's sort of the perfect uh, setup for us. So what we're going to do, we're going to break that down, as I say, into different chunks that are going to show you how Shotgun will work. We're going to start with the producer view. And I will apologize in advance, because I usually get my mouse to click on the wrong bit, and I advance frames, and I come back. So bear with me as we go. So anyway, take a look at the producer view. So the producer is going to set up the project in advance. Okay, So he's got a login for Shotgun, and he'll go in, and he will basically set up this project. So it's a clean slate. He's branded it up, so everybody involved in the project knows what they're working on. Um, as you can see, we've got a couple of areas here. We've got a nice clean wall, so that we know there's no activity going on. Um, we have also got a couple of uh, tabs at the top. So we've got an inbox, and we've got a task list. And uh, let me just go back and play that again, just so I can show you what I'm talking about. Pause it here. So at the top, you'll see we've got an inbox and a task list. So they're two important bits. So the inbox is a nice, clean inbox that relates specifically to the project. So if you're doing any communications around Matoni water, it's going to live in that inbox. You can obviously tie it into Outlook or Gmail or whatever you want. But interestingly, it's not going to be bombarded with day-to-day -day email communications about, you know, you've, your John Lewis adverts, great, go and take a look at it, or whatever it might be. You know, all the, the stuff that clogs up and distracts you, that's all kept out. You've got a nice, clean communication platform there. You've got a task list, and your task list is basically where you as an artist, for example, would start your day. You go into your task list, or oh, I've been allocated to do this, best get on with it and fire up your application. So the task list is essentially where you're managed. Now, because this person's the producer, he's got loads more access. You can do custom pages. You can pull custom reports. We'll talk about those bits and bobs later. On the right-hand side, you'll see we've got people. So what I've done is all of my other colleagues that are part of the production process, they've all got allocated to this project. So essentially, anything that they log on to and see will just be people chatting from those that small restricted group about what they've done, what stage they're at. And as we go on, this wall here acts a bit like Facebook, so it's just going to keep you updated with a running commentary of all the chit chat that's going on. But if you want to strip all that out, you go into your inbox and you start there. Okay? So very simple, a clean slate, a nice clean login, and that's where you start. And this is where everything then gets populated from. I told you I'm going to keep skipping things. So we're going to start our commercial. We're going to start in Flame, and we're going to build a conform. So we've got all of the shots. We've edited them into a rough cut, and now we want to publish that to the project so everybody knows, OK, we've got the rough timings for this advert, and away we go. And this is essentially how that artist would see it. So with Shotgun, you've got a nice desktop app. You don't even need to log into the web. And in this case, the Flame operator, he's going to start up by firing up Flame. And he's got a timeline with all of those clips edited into sequence, uh, as you can see here. So we've got a nice bank of all of the rushes. We've decided which ones we want. We've put them into a timeline, and we're ready to publish that. And instead of him having to export a movie and save it and then FTP it, all he has to do is say, I'm going to publish it to that project we've set up. I'm going to put in a note just saying, here's the publish. It doesn't matter who it is, what email address you've got. That's it. He just edits, hits publish, and it all gets uploaded directly to the site. So in the background, what happens when you publish something to Shotgun, all of your high-res footage is kept 
safe and secure locally on your storage, on your local system, whatever it might be. Full resolution, nothing's changed, nothing's touched. But some metadata as to where all that lives is kept up on the cloud. Also, we take a copy of that data and transcode it on an Amazon web server into a 1280p, nice, easy to play, quick transcoded version of the footage so that you can see that edit wherever you happen to be in the world. Okay, you don't have to be in the studio, you don't have to try and upload that video footage, it's all handled remotely by Shotgun for you. So, that's very nice because me as the producer, I now want to take a look at that edit and make sure it's okay timing wise, make sure it makes sense and then we're going to send it downstream for finishing. So, here I am, I've seen now that we've got all of the shots in that conform, 150 odd shots for the, the uh, video, all uploaded. Uh, and at any point I can go into one of those shots and hit play and I'll see this transcoded version. So this is what the offline servers has done for me. It's given me a version that I can now look in the browser, I can make some adjustments to, I can mark it up, I've got the grease pencil there. And again, any comments I want to make, I can do all that within the system and hit save and it's just going to store it and track it all for me and feed that information back to whoever's associated with the project. I can download a higher res version, so if it's important for me to see her hair at 4K, for example, I can hit download and it will go off to my local storage and it will pull a version of that for me to look at. But obviously, mostly, I'm happy with just looking at the shots in context here. So, that's it. Very easy to do. So the guy that's published that video from Flame hasn't had to worry about anything more than just hitting publish. Me as the producer, wanting to look at it back, I haven't had to worry about anything like installing the right codec or getting an attachment or downloading a big terabyte stream of video. It's all handled natively by Shotgun. So let's assume, me as the producer, I'm now happy with that sequence. Okay, looks good to me. We're going to start adding some elements. So I'm going to go into my shots list, and this is where it's taken the edit from Flame, and it's named all the different component shots. So I'm going to go to one of those shots. Let's uh, look at this one here. And I'm going to say, right, I need this now to have a CG element added to it. Okay? So you can see all of my different departments have been defined. I'm now going to add a new task into animation. And I'm going to say my animator, in this case Graham, who's my 3D guy, I want to give him a task to work with. So I'm going to give him a couple of days to build a 3D giraffe use that shot as his template and to get working. Now, as soon as I drag this out into the timeline, obviously this could be really complex if there were other projects going on, all I have to do is just drag out the time I'm going to give him and say, look, backplate's good, go on and create the CG. And as soon as I hit OK, Graham will get a task in his task list with that information. He'll know how long he's got, he'll know what task he's got to do, he'll know what shot it applies to, and when he launches Maya, it's going to have all of that in context. Okay, so he doesn't have to worry about the version of the scene, the back plate, it's all configured and drawn into the project for him. So let's have a look at what Graham then does. So Graham's got that. He's now working in Maya, and as you can see, he's got a custom shotgun panel. He's built his giraffe, he's animated it, and he's ready to publish that back to me. Okay, so if you were the 3D guy and you were working in Maya, this is exactly your workflow. So he's just created a quick play blast from the viewport of his giraffe. He could have done a full render and have that automatically uploaded, but in this case, he's just created something on his desktop that he's happy with or he thinks he's happy with, and now he wants me to go ahead and approve it. Right? So all he has to do is take that movie and it, there's various ways he could do this, but he's just going to drag and drop it into the browser and it's going to upload to Shotgun. It's going to create an offline cached version at 1280p so anybody can watch it. And of course, it's going to keep all the metadata as to where that lives on the server in case we need to actually review the high res version later on. So very easy for the artist here. And now you'll see later on that there are panels now within the applications that save you even having to drag and drop everything. But that's all he has to do to, to upload that ready for me to review. Now, me as a typical producer, I've gone off for a coffee. Okay, so I'm not in the office. I'm now twiddling my thumbs in Starbucks. 
And then he still wants me to review and approve it, so I can log on to my, my iPad. I can load up the app, and the app will take me into the same project structure. So in this case, I can go in and see that Graham's uploaded a couple of different clips for me. I'm going to look at the latest one, as you can see, because it's all cloud-based. It's just going to stream that video, and I can scrub, pause, zoom, pan, do everything I want. And I can do it all remotely. I could be on my laptop. I could be on the app here. And again, the nice thing about it is feeding back information or changes to him. I don't have to worry about any attachments or using an email client or anything like that. It all just gets done here. And in this case, I've said fix the neck, the skinning's off, it doesn't look very good, and I can just draw that, you know. Very, very simple and interactive. And of course, I can make my comments here, safe in the knowledge that when I hit submit, Graham's going to get something in his inbox that says that. It's going to show him the image of what I've marked up. It makes it very clear for him what I'm not happy about and what he now needs to go and change. Okay, so anyway, he's done his job, we're happy with it, and we're now looking at Flare. So Flare is a really good product to create versions, okay? So we've got the CG elements in there, I've said this is brilliant, I want a couple of different versions of this ad, so we can go to the client and say what do you prefer, okay? So in this case, we've stuck a parrot in there, okay? We've chroma keyed a parrot onto the chair, so this is a second version of the ad that we're doing. And this is typically how Flare would work. So again, Stuart, who's working in Flare, he's published that back. You can see my activity wall. I can see exactly what it is. And I can watch a version of that ad directly from the browser. But now what I want to do is share this with my client. And again, if you're working with a client, you know they're notoriously difficult for receiving broadcast quality footage and doing something useful with it because they don't necessarily have the systems in place to do that. So Shotgun makes it very easy for me to share my content. In this case, I'm going to create a playlist. So I'm going to call it Client Playlist. Right? Very simple process. And I'm just going to drag and drop into that playlist all of the things that I want my client to see. And in this case, you know, I'm just showing them a couple of different versions of the ad. Once I hit publish, this creates a mini portal, and this is exactly what my client is going to see. So again, my client, I might want to brand it. In this case, I've stuck an Autodesk logo, but that could be your studio name. And you can design how this portal looks, OK? So it's really customized to you. And you can give the client information as to what they need to review. You can give them control over what they can access or what they can't access. You can time bomb access to this playlist, so they've only got access to it for a couple of days. But then when you hit publish, basically this portal gets turned into something public. And the way that your client will see it is through a, li uh, a link. So he gets a link in his inbox. When he clicks on that, he can then log into this portal you've designed. Okay? And he gets the same functionality as anybody using Shotgun Word. The client doesn't need a subscription to Shotgun. He doesn't need a login. He just gets a really nice clean viewer onto exactly what you want him to review and approve, okay? So then, you know, when the client says I'm happy and hits submit, that all gets fed back into the system. So the client can't wriggle out of it. The client can't say, oh, did you not get my email? You know, it all gets tracked. And of course, when we go back into the system as a producer, I can see in my nice clean inbox, that I've got the feedback from the client. He's happy. He's signed off on it and it's done, okay? So it's, it's a nice managed communication structure around the project. So very easy to work with, saves a lot of those pitfalls that we get. And a lot of that comes down to the fact that you can do this wherever you want. So we're using an HTML5 player, we've got a transcoded footage system that doesn't touch any servers in your building, so you don't need a big high-end transcoder to, to handle all your footage. It all gets done directly by a cloud system and deployed to whoever needs to see it, regardless of whether it's a client or yourself, using whatever device they happen to be comfortable using. So that's kind of the backbone of what Shotgun does and what it looks like. But of course, you know, it's a cloud product, so we're constantly throwing new updates to it and giving you new ideas of, of what it can do. So I'm just going to talk you through a few little things that, that have come into the system recently if you're using Shotgun already. First thing is Flame has had a big overhaul. So if you're a Flame user and you're working with Shotgun, we've got a really tight publish workflow 
from one product to the other. And we've also improved the way that you work with something like Hero or Nuke as well. So it's not just our own products that are getting attention. You know, we're, we're improving how Shotgun interacts with other systems as well. And we use new panels within those applications to make it really easy to publish to. The other thing that we've just added is what we call cut support. So previously, you know, when you uploaded, let's say, a conform to Shotgun, it would just take those shots and just dump them in a, a, a list for you. But now we actually support the cut mentality. So if you're working in an edit and you're changing the order and you're building an edit decision list and you want Shotgun to actually understand how you're revising the edit of that sequence, we actually support all of that in the application now. And that basically means that if you're, for example, working in Premiere or something like that, you could go in and actually see the cuts directly in the sequence. And we can start to splice versions together and actually start to build a rough cut of the system. So in this case, in the player, I've just brought in a couple of clips, put them in side by side, and I've just started to make some adjustments as to the timing of the edits. And, and Shotgun will understand it, and it will manage that for me. The other thing you can do is, let's say you are working with an edit tool, you can drag and drop the EDL into the system, you can drag and drop the movie associated with it as well, and then Shotgun will properly manage different versions of the edit. Okay, so as you're making changes in the editing tool and you're updating that EDL live, Shotgun will be keeping a track of what's changed, where the different versions are, and you can actually go in and see these and see, okay, well, version one was cut that way, version two's cut this way, and it will actually allow you to preview that and we'll, we'll manage it as well, as you can see here. So all of this is being done directly in the system. Um, we can do nice things as well, like A over B, so we can sort of see different versions. We can, you know, sort of compare them side by side, so you get a different view of, of those shots as well. The other thing is, we include something called RV. Now, RV was developed by ILM to play back in real time, very high resolution footage. RV is part of Shotgun. You download it, you install it in your system, and it integrates with Shotgun in exactly the same way as the browser view does. And as you can see, it just enables you to work exactly the same way, but you're working with the local high res footage. So if you're working on a big 4K project, you can do everything that you could do online with Shotgun locally in RV, and again, it works exactly the same. Okay, so RV is kind of your desktop high-res version. Shotgun is your online preview version if you happen to be away from your desk, and that's exactly how you can work. And you see that they look the same, they integrate the same, and tr Shotgun will track everything that you do. Um, a little bit about the licensing. I'm going to hand over to Morgan in a moment just to talk a bit more about how he, he properly used it when he was at Passion. Um, but we've got a couple of ways of, of licensing Shotgun. So there's a monthly subscription, which you do on our e-store. So that's paid in dollars. So basically every user has either a, a, an awesome, awesome support level uh, subscription at $30 or super awesome gives you lots more functionality lots more security and more importantly lots of technical support on configuring and setting up shotgun so they're monthly options you just sign up with your credit card you add users and away you go if you like shotgun and you think it's going to be the backbone of your facility it's cheaper and easier and more manageable to go with annual or multi-annual subscriptions so essentially you get a, t a, a cost saving and you can pay in pounds because it's not very efficient paying in US dollars at the moment because the dollar is so strong. So, um, yeah, you can pay in pounds. You get 12 months usage for the price of 10, roughly, plus the effects saving. Um, and it just makes it easier for you to, uh, to run with shotgun for a, a longer period of time in a more predictable way. Um, you can get a trial of shotgun. So if you think it's good and you want to give it a whirl, you can get a completely unrestricted, fully technically supported version of shotgun. 30-day trial for um, commercial users. If you're an educational facility, get free. So we provide Shotgun to your university for free for as many users as you want. Um, obviously, the trial is a good place to start. We work with Blue. Blue are a reseller for Shotgun, so if you're interested in buying it, uh, Blue would be the people to, to speak to today about um, actually getting your hands on a, a commercial version of Shotgun. So, with all that in mind, I'm going to hand over to Morgan. Uh, Morgan is just going to talk a little bit about 
how he used shotgun of passion um, and sort of delve into some of the more interesting features that perhaps he found useful at the time. Yeah, I'm just going to give you this. Very kind. You're <laughs> more than welcome. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. There you go. Okay, thank you. Just it There you go. There you go. Is that working? Hello. So, yeah, don't worry, I'm not going to keep you here for too long. Just a sort of five minutes, really, just to talk a little bit about how I used it at Passion. Um, so, probably for those of you who've seen my Maya stuff today, I've worked in the industry for a number of years. These are the companies, but Passion is the one I want to focus on today. So, to describe one of the ways I used shotgun to make my life easier. So my job at Passion was rigging supervisor. So I had a team on some of the bigger projects of roughly five or six riggers. And you know, when you're dealing with large productions, so we had a show that we did for the Football World Cup, um, which had roughly 400 assets. So I was dealing with shotgun very much from an assets point of view. So I was like, how do I manage this number of characters and props. I think we had 60 or 70 characters and a huge number of props to go with that. So there was a lot of data flying around. I was the one who was responsible for you know, assigning which riggers were doing which tasks. I had to be on top of you know, which models had been completed and were ready to start. So with all of that information flying around, as Kevin showed earlier with the uh, spaghetti junction diagram of all the different pipeline steps you see in your normal production, I was trying to sort of figure out, okay, how can I get the best out of shotgun to get this, you know, big to-do list between the department of props and characters to whittle it down to the information that's important to me. So unfortunately, I haven't got actual passion assets I was allowed to share today. They've, they're still trying to sort of negotiate that with their clients as well as to what they can give us to share. So I have got a games character from uh, Digit Pictures for the Witcher project. So. This isn't a passion character, but this will give you an idea of how I was using it uh, in production. So I've just got a very short video here showing one of the, what I think is one of the strong, strongest features of shotgun. Oops, it's jumped forward. I'm doing that thing that you were doing yeah. earlier. Yeah, it's quite tricky when you're sort of miles away from the desktop. So this uh, is custom pages. So this is one of the parts of shotgun I thought was the most powerful and really kind of simplified those big to-do lists for either individual users or for your whole department. So here we're just setting up a new page, and I'm just calling it Geralt, who's one of these Witcher characters, tasks that are assigned to me. So you start off with this page. I mean, this is what I'm referring to, and I'm talking about you know loads of tasks, loads of assets that we want to try and simplify. So in the same way that you would filter out your email in Outlook, we can create these very powerful custom filters inside of Shotgun as well. So here I'm just saying, show me an asset where the name is Geralt. Uh, show me an asset where the, um, I can't remember what I did here, the assigned to, so who it's assigned to includes the name me. So if I type me instead of Morgan Evans, it's doing it just based on my Shotgun login. And then I also want to go in and say, only show me uh, tasks where the status has not been yet set to either final or polish. So you can, you can say is or is not, and we'll see this here in a second. I've just changed that to status. I've changed it to is not. And then this shows you all the different kind of stages, whether it's in progress or polish or final. I'm only interested in the ones that aren't yet complete or final. So I've finished my filter here. Suddenly that to-do list has gone down to a nice, short, manageable list where it's only showing me those tasks that are still outstanding. If I update the status here to final and then refresh the page, it's going to fall off that list because it no longer fits that sort of filter criteria that I set up. So you can apply this not just to tasks, but you can apply this to uh, notes as well. So that was another way we used to use Shotgun uh, Passion where we would have a task, say a rigging task, and within that you would have in a way subtasks. So perhaps there's been uh, a model change. So someone would give you a note saying, hey, there's been a model change, can you update the rig? So that would probably fall under a notes category within these. And you can uh, do custom pages for notes or any entity within Shotgun. 
And that was one of the ways that we were able to kind of deal with these large numbers of tasks and assets uh, within Passion, was to set up all these custom pages. And what's nice about these pages, you can do it from an artist level, so just to make your own to-do list a bit easier, you can be in control of those filters, or you can make it a global page. So for instance, I did some of these pages for the rigging department, and then the modeling guys were like, hey, that's really cool. Can we just change that filter so it says modeling instead of rigging? And then you can save that page as a copy, essentially. And then that's how you can kind of grow your shotgun universe uh, within your studio, is doing these sort of customizations, whether it's through pages or dashboards is another way where you can customize this information. And then within the product itself, uh, this goes back to the idea of toolkit. So we had an in-house version of this at Passion. This is actually the toolkit that comes out of the box. So say I've been assigned a rigging task. I want to load in the model. I want to use Maya's quick rig tool here to quickly put a rig on. And I want to publish that back up to Shotgun. So this is the other side to Shotgun that really helps with the task management, is that you can do these tasks. And it's all kind of tracked within your 3D package of choice. So here I just want to save the scene using the uh, shotgun file saver. And then I want to publish it back up to shotgun. So when I say publish, all we're doing is taking that metadata, whether it's comments like, hey, I've just finished the rig, or a thumbnail image. That is the metadata that goes up to shotgun. But the actual scene file itself is still being stored on your local servers. And shotgun knows where that lives. So as Kevin said earlier, you can launch into uh, shotgun um, in, into Maya, sorry, from within Shotgun. So we publish this back up to Shotgun, and then you can see that this has made its way back up to the overview page. And then you know the producers and whoever is tracking that asset can see what's going on uh, within Shotgun. So here we'll see that that rig is now showing up. That little thumbnail I did uh, has all made its way back up to Shotgun. So finally, we talked a little bit about Toolkit and the sort of out-of-the-box UI stuff. The other side to Shotgun is the Python API. So I've worked in rigging for 12 years. Part of rigging is scripting as well. So I, I, as part of this big job we did for the World Cup, I think we had 150 props where all they needed was one controller and one joint. So I was able to automate that very easily just with a simple rigging script to say, OK, based on this big list of props, automatically put a joint in there, automatically put a rig. But then I was scratching my head and I was like, I don't want to have to go in shotgun for those 150 assets, go and find them, and manually kind of set their statuses to complete. So through the Python API of shotgun, you can add this kind of automation as one extra line of code to these kind of rig scripts or modeling scripts or whatever you want to do. So as well as publishing those rig assets for me, it's also updating the status in shotgun to complete at the same time. So it, it actually was quite a pleasure for me to just log on to my shotgun site and see my tasks list just automatically shrinking as this script was running in the background. So those statuses were just going to complete, 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 complete. And I was having a beer at home, you know, watching all this kind of happening in the background. So it's this kind of automation with shotgun that I think really works for studios and uh, improving workflows. So that's kind of my little bit to add on. We've gone a little bit over. Um, but that's kind of how we were using it in Passion. So it really did help us deal with like the complexities of that modern day pipeline that Kevin showed earlier. So just a quick sort of snippet, really, as to how we were using it in a, in a real world example. So uh, yeah.